feels like a mug shot. You look like a mug. <laughs> right, anyway, explain to the people. <coughs> oh my god, right, so... I mean, we've seen a lot of stuff, haven't we? Yeah. We've seen a lot of stuff. Am I saying that I've seen this car yet? Yeah, it don't matter, yeah, we've seen it. Because I knew this car was going to be special from the pictures that I've seen, but I cannot... I don't think I'm going to be able to describe to you how mental this car is. I'm so excited to show everyone uh, this car. More to the point, more of it is about the guy's built it himself in a garage. It's not gone to some race manufacturer and had hundred grand spent on it and they've just gone, there you go, it's all finished. He's done it himself. He's built, I was having a quick conversation with him, didn't ask too many questions, but he's built every inch of this car himself. He, he learnt to TIG weld so that he can make a roll cage for it. He's, there's, there's parts of the car which I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna go for, I can't fit enough words in to describe it. But when you see it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bombard this guy with questions because I'm so, so interested in it. It's a BMW... No, don't even talk about it. Let's go and show the people. Okay, you need to see it. You need to see it. Hey, do you like my shoes? Done well today. Well done. Racing. Right, here we go. Right, so I just spoke, you, uh, I had a little bit of an intro outside, and when I saw this car, I was like, I'm in the pictures, it looks interesting, and it looks fantastic. Actually, quite a lot of the time, when you see pictures of some stuff, it just meets expectations. This is by far the fucking nuttiest car I've ever come across, and I've seen and driven some batshit cars, and this is off the scale. So, um... I'm going to have a quick, try to rein myself in and try and ask us just the critical details about this car, but every inch of it is, is not standard. And there will, there will be bits during this that you're going to point out and we're going to point out and bits you're going to spot where you're like, actually, that looks like it's standard, but it's actually not. From behind, I mean, you can see not much of it's standard. So this is a, this is a gentleman that owns it anyway. Hi. <laughs> so, come in, come in. Um, anyway, so here's our, th here's our fourth member of Matt Rennix. Um, Doggy! He loves a dog. Oh, God. Yeah. Dog bound. Right, so um, I've, been I've been like smothering Matt with questions this morning about this car because it's just it's bonkers. And I want to know so much about it. But if you could summarise it, if we just summarise it in like three things, it was, it was, it, am I right? It was a BMW. Yeah, E36 chassis. An E36 chassis. Yeah. Beetle body. Yeah. With an RB25 in it. Yeah. That's it, that's all it is. That's, that's all it is, that's, that's, that's all it is, that's all it is. How many more have you got? Next time and we'll be, yeah. yeah. Neighbour's got one as well, yeah. yeah. So he's actually, he actually cut the floor out of the bin. There is a story behind that, I don't know if we've got time to go into that, about how it, how it came around. Tell the, the story. story. Tell the story. Tell the story. All right, so yeah, a little bit of background on it. Right, the Beetle Shell, that was my first ever car. The BMW E36 was one of my first drift cars that I had. Um, uh, had a unit, um, farmer fucked us over pretty much and the Beetle was there being restored and the BMW 36 was there also because it was fucked as they all are. <laughs> um, and then I, so we got kicked out of that unit, we got given a couple of days to go and I, uh, I cut the shell off of the BMW because I have no money and I can only afford one trailer ride. So I put the 36 chassis on the trailer and I put the Beetle shell on top of it. And then I thought that was a fucking good idea, and here yeah. we are. <laughs> and that's it. That is basically, that is, I say basically, there's nothing basic about this. That is, that is what it is. But I've got, I, I, I can't put into words how interested I am and, and how much respect I've got to Matt for building it. Because it's not one of those, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's not one of those cars that's been to a, a race car manufacturer and had a, a blank check and they've just, you've just gone, I want this engine in that body with that chassis, off you go. And then there's, and, you know, they just, they just build for it. It is like all, he learned to TIG weld so that he can make his own roll cage. This is the sort of commitment we're talking about. Um, should we have a little walk around yeah. it? Should we have a little walk around? So quick, a quick run down the engine. What's the spec on the engine? Uh, it's fully forged, um, ported and float head, um, G 
genuine greedy manifold which I had to cut to fit this. Which oh, awesome. chopping up expensive yeah. stuff, I like that, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, just so much custom stuff, mate. It's just a, it is a normal forged RV25. There's nothing that special going on in there. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it's just, yeah, it's got some things on it. So a forged RV25s, it's a 500, uh, you know, with a company in turbo and everything, that's 500 horsepower capable, you 600. Could, you know, six, seven probably, with yeah. the bottom end, but that turbo's running out of like 500. That's is it? it? Yeah. I noticed it's quite a small exhaust side on the turbo, it's so. Tight. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It must come on song, yeah. like, instantly. Between two and 3,000 RPM, it picks up 200 horsepower. <laughs> Imagine what that's like in a car that weighs a thousand kilos and then you get a 200 horsepower kick up the arse within how many, what's, what's the RPM range? A thousand RPM. A thousand well, RPM. Yeah. I mean, so that's like, that. does it hook? I mean, does it start to just do rolling burnouts at that point? Or? Well, probably today it's going to do lots of burnouts. <laughs> <laughs> so it's forged uh, and it's a whole Z, what, what do whole Z rate their turbos with? It's like, is it in millimetres or is it, it's not the same as Garrett? Yeah, I think it is, yes, yeah, uh, HX35. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Any, all, all you drift guys are probably not yeah, what HX35 yeah, is. The, the peasant turbo. Yeah, but it works, it works, <laughs> yeah, doesn't it? Does, and yeah. one question I want to ask is where the wheels have come from. What are the wheels off of? They are 17 inch standard banded steel sort of for any old BMW. Yeah. Oh, it's a BMW wheel? Yeah, right, so, I have, okay. so I had them banded to fit, but I need to add some more rear tire because there's not enough rear tire. Did you build the arch to the wheel or did you put the wheel on and go, that's how much arch I need, I'm gonna weld that to it? I've done that before players because I, <laughs> I was very tired one night and I didn't do my nuts up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drove it out of my unit and the wheel might have fallen off. Might have fallen off. Might have fallen off a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it adds character to the yeah. car and this car is absolutely dripping in character because there's so many bits, there's historical stuff. I'm going to turn my back to the camera just for one second. Nick, can I show you this? And I was yeah, asking yeah. Matt about this earlier, right? So this is part of the history and I, I love the fact that, that this has been kept and hasn't been filled over and masked and all that hard work has been, has been covered up. So the fuel filler cap, was about three inches to the left hand side of this and then you were saying Matt when you built the cage the cage interfered with the with where the, the filler neck was so he had to drill another hole in the roof welded it up flattened it off and has left it and that's not that's actually it's something to be revered because that's more hard work that's gone into that so don't fill it over someone's put work into that other thing I noticed while I'm talking about it is I noticed that the, the windscreen you've probably seen in the pictures the windscreen is very short so it's had a roof chop which is been done loads on Beatles, isn't it? I mean, right from the, like the 60s and 70s. But the rear half is stock, did you say? Uh, up to here, so that's, that would be a standard Beatles. So that's a standard window. Yeah, well, well, all, big, but it would yeah, 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 all yeah, purposes, yeah. you know. Um, but actually, so why is there not a crease in the roof? I mean, how did, did you just fold it down or did you angle the roof down or? So there's like a teacup, like the cut like that. So the roof gets wider and it gets longer. So you have to piece a bit in, so that's why that colour's different to this, because that's a different beetle roof. You're kidding? No, so that's laid over more because I wanted it to be lent back rather so than So this upright. isn't all one well, roof? Well, th th this, this and that is one roof, and then this piece in the middle here is a different Are you getting this? <laughs> How long has it taken you start to finish? From when you just plonked the body on, you went, do you know what, that'd be a good idea, to now? Six years. Six years? Like yeah, something like Fair that. Fair enough. And this is all done by one dude in the garage, or probably a couple of mates, maybe at times, I suppose. Yeah, it's mostly me though, to be fair. I don't trust many people to work on it. No, fair play, right? <laughs> Let's have a, have a look at the engine bay side of things, right? What was the engine bay? <laughs> so, yeah, it, ah. yeah, it was an engine bay, it's now a radiator bay, if that's a thing. So, little details like this, I asked Matt earlier. So, to get the rad cap off, obviously you need a radiator support, which is, everything is fabricated immaculately. Um, is that, is, He's done the radiator support with a little kink in the bar here so that you can clear it when, you when you're trying to undo the radiator cap. Um, and then it's been painted as well. Again, it's the kind of, it's the difference between the outside just looking bolt together and then little finishes like that that are so, so well done. Exhaust is, do is so nicely presented. It's all, it, it obviously just works. Um, and what sort of power do you think it's making again? Uh, well, 510 the wheels. Five, so that's what, 550 at the crank ish? Yeah, around that. Something like that. And it weighs 1,000 kilos. The wheelbase is no longer than. Well, it's a it's stock wheelbase, I suppose, isn't it? No, it's 13 inches cut out of a 36 coupe. So for a Beetle wheelbase, that's about the same, is it? I don't know. Yeah. Well, it is now. <laughs> it, is. <laughs> it works, didn't it? That's the thing. I put the arches on and went back. Polycarbonate windows, obviously. Um, all this has all been fabricated. Obviously, Beetles didn't have that. Uh, as standard, so it's a, what 
So it's on a it's on a link ECU, isn't it? Yeah. And that is that a link dashboard, I suppose it sort of no, talks to it. No, that's a process technology dashboard, but yeah, they do talk to it. Right. right. So you've yeah, got your yeah. RPM and your oil yeah, temp yeah. and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Obviously, it's all been fabricated by himself. He's still using the Nissan gearbox, is it? Yes. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Is that to be upgrade? Are you actually upgrade that? Or? No, no, that's just standard uh, M3 diff as well. So. Oh, M3, obviously yeah. an M3 oh, diff. Why just not? like just chuck yeah. that in there. Have you had to move the firewall back, or is that a stock location? So that's, for- BMW 36 firewall. Is it? So where the foot pedal, I've had to mess around it a little bit to get the pedal box in. But right. Yeah, so where that is, is standard E36. So it's E36 up, so right. If, if you come around here, you can have Yeah, it. yeah, here we go. So this is E36 up to this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then from that point back, that's Beetle. So that is E36 down. And then from that point up, it's Beetle. I mean, it's just, it's just baffling. So. And, and this is keeping in mind as well that you're not a fabricator and you haven't been doing this for years and years. You've just gone, if I can't do it, I'll learn how to do it. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, I've, we're going to run out of memory card space if, if I could ask all the questions that I wanted to ask. Thank you so much for letting us have a look at it, Matt, because it's just like, it's, it's, it's blown me away a little bit. Um, we're going to go out for a little drive. See what it drives like and what it sounds like. I think it's listening to this thing starting up and looking like a beetle but sounding like a skyline is going to be something interesting. So if we're right to go out for a drive, that'd be cool. Of course. Wicked, man. Perfect weather to go out, isn't it, Steve? Beautiful. It's one of them days where you think, yeah, we're going to nail this and then you get this weather. I even bought the V-Box as well, but... That was ambitious. That it? was ambitious, so that's not going to be... That's like bringing sunglasses on there and it pisses five days. Well, it's like wearing sunglasses in the dark, you mean. Yeah, well, if you like. Yeah, yeah. that's probably an easy analogy, Shout out to uh, Ray Charles, there we go. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Um, Your little face. you stop looking at me? No, never. <laughs> The RB25 Beetle BMW. Yeah, <laughs> this is something. I mean, most people could probably get into this and they wouldn't be able to liken it to anything. But actually, like I was saying, it is quite similar to the Escort in terms of how confined it is and where we're sitting in that. It's all like elbow room, is it? It's, no, no, that's <laughs> it, yeah, we're big guys though, to be fair. Yeah. This is one of the first cars I've got in that I've actually thought. I'm a bit apprehensive about this. In a good way, in a good way. Brilliant. Do you know what I've noticed? I can see the, the water flicking up off the wheel where it's just slightly protruding yeah. from the fender. That's cool. Yeah. Little bits like that. Has it still got... So if it's got a link ECU, have you got... Um, with a laptop, you can look at the real-time data and that sort of stuff. It's pretty good like that. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Have you, do you, have you had uh, any input into the... <coughs> Tuning a bit, do you, do you have to go in there to look at data much, or you don't really uh, need to? I've done some remote stuff, but mate, me and laptops. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I can just about send an email as well as far as you go. So if I'm doing anything, Mark's on the other side of the phone. Fair play, like, fair yeah. play. We've got team viewer now as well. Yeah, well, I say it. now, it's probably been around 50 years, but I hope you know the roads, but you probably do know the roads around here. So what's this here then? Fire. Ah! Blisteringly quick, yeah. isn't it? It's definitely enough. More than enough. Oh, Jesus. Because I've been driving a van for years. <laughs> <laughs> Most 
cars with people and particularly if they haven't built it themselves they don't know the limits of the car so they get in it and they boot it a bit in a straight line in the perfect conditions but you know every inch of it you know it's so predictable and you can see it's predictable you know exactly how it's going to work yep. still scares me every time yeah. it has to if a car doesn't excite you like that then one hand the amount of times I've been in something that's actually got me so excited about about whatever it is as this I'm blown away by how the guys built it all himself and that the, the performance of it the way it just it's just an amazing car start to finish I've had a good time I hope you guys have enjoyed it I, I, you can probably see by the state of my face while we're accelerating through the rain and the poor terrain and everything it is absolutely balmy if you like the video please like it share it subscribe to our channel we've got loads more stuff Maybe not quite as mad as this, but we've got great stuff lined up for you guys. Can you hit the bell where you can and follow us? Join us on our journey. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the baggy, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the baggy, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I've been on the flex since flex on. 